I'd like to say good evening to everyone. My name is Peggy Trivis, and I'll be your moderator for this evening's lecture. I'd like to welcome you all to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organizations. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization that is dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of the eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in 1958, and since that time we have established branch schools across the United States, uh, Canada, and other foreign countries. The Syracuse branch was established in 1969. At this time, I'd like to introduce the Dean of the Syracuse branch, Dr. Patrick Trevison, our President, Dr. Robert Welch, and our Vice President, Dr. John Cometti. Now, in this school and throughout the lecture this evening, we'll be using the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of your Heavenly Father is Yahweh. This has been improperly substituted in most Bibles with the title, Lord. For the word or son, we use a divine title, Elohim. This has been improperly substituted in most Bibles with the title, God. And the name of the Holy Spirit manifesting in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. This has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. We now know each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title, which means that Elohim is the title that your creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it's an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into encyclopedia or dictionary would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language contain any character or letter in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by the letter J. Neither was there a J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible and untrue renderings of the true name of the Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Now Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, is pure spirit. And in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because the cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. And if you take a look at this chart, you'll see that we have this cloud painted all the way around the edges of the chart so that everything on the chart abides within this cloud in like manner. Everything in the universe abides within this pure spirit state of Yahweh. And Yahweh, knowing that man cannot perceive of him in this pure spirit state, takes on shape and takes on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This visionary shape and form can only be seen by divine vision and only understood by divine revelation. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world has come to know erroneously as Jesus or Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that <coughs> name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time that he did walk the earth plane? You can get a better understanding of his name and title by reading a preface to a Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. We call it a divine pattern because this is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt and into the wilderness of Sinai, he then called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and revealed this tabernacle pattern to him in a vision. Moses was instructed to return to the wilderness of Sinai and build one exactly as he had seen in the mount. This tabernacle pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments making up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof how that everything is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. 
In this school, we have 10 primary constitutional aims or objectives, and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, compared to religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Watch with his peace and our slogan to speak the truth. I'd like to have this evening's met meeting dedicated with prayer by Dr. Ann Hodges and that will be followed by a scripture reading. Is it Psalms 19, Rick? No. Oh. 2 Corinthians 11, 1 through 15. Our scripture readers this evening are Dr. Deb Cometti and Dr. Tracy Bennett. And we will have hospitality announcements by Dr. Tracy Bennett. Let's take a moment to bow our hearts and minds and thank Yahshua for bringing us together again uh, for bringing surprise visitors from a few hours away. And let us remember the times are short, extremely short, and we need to stand fast in what we know. We need to put random thoughts on the back burner. Um, we need to learn what we can, but don't forget the basics and what we were raised in and what we know. We know for a surety and we will go to the grave with. Thank you, Yahshua, for giving us what you have and hoping to gain more knowledge of you before you finally take us out of here. With all that, let us all say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening, class. Good evening. I'll be reading 2 Corinthians, the 11th, 2 Corinthians 11, 1 through 15. I wanted to make sure I had the right place. Would to Elohim you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to the Messiah. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his sub, sub, subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in the Messiah. For if he that cometh preacheth another, Yahshua, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. 
For I suppose I was not a wit behind the very chiefest apostles. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. Have I committed an offense in abasing myself that you might be exalted because I preach to you the gospel of Yahweh Elohim freely? I robbed other churches, taking wages of them to do you service. And when I was present with you and wanted, I was changeable, chargeable to no man. For that which was lacking to me, the brethren, which came from Macedonia, supplied. And in all things I have kept myself from being burden, burdensome unto you, and so will I keep myself. As the truth of the Messiah is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore? Because I love you not. God know, oh, sorry, Elohim knoweth. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of the Messiah, and no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. That was Second Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 15. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to our school. And that's what this is, is our school. Um, we continue to learn more of Yahweh Elohim's eternal purpose and plan, and with great pleasure, because this is the only truth that there is. Um, we have visitors with us tonight, so I'd like to acknowledge all of them. It always gives us great pleasure to have the brethren from other classes come to visit us. It truly is a blessing because we have one another. So without further ado, let me welcome Dr. Donna Mitchell from Jamaica. That's the Caribbean. <laughs> um, Dr. Rohan Ross from Arkport, New York. Dr. Bonnie Snyder from Arkport, New York. Dr. Rob Faulkner from Arkport, New York. Dr. Allison Snyder from Arkport, New York. And Dr. Justin Snyder from Arkport, New York. Did I give everybody? Wonderful. It, like I said, it is great pleasure to have you here with us. It's like a spiritual feast. And I couldn't be happier, and I speak for all of Syracuse class. So we have no first-time visitors or returning guests. So with that, I'm going to take my seat and I yield the floor. Thank you. And for our first speaker tonight, I'd like to call on Dr. Allison Snyder from our Artport, New York class. Oh, thank you. Let's put the hair out. It's all good. Okay. Oh. Let me cinch you. Then we'll do it then. Oh, not too tight. Is good? Wonderful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> good evening. Good evening. I'm happy and glad to be here, and I'll try to talk loud enough for all those in the back to hear me. Um, it's been a while since we've been in Syracuse. But we just got back, as Peggy and Rick did, from the symposium in Orlando, which we are always really just thankful to be able to take part in anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. And this one was absolutely beautiful. <laughs> it was just very simple teaching on the floor the entire time. Mm -hmm. And just beautiful, it was just beautiful. And so, um, remind me of what the, topic was the way that they had it written down 
because I know it's laying your life down for the brethren. I just can't remember what the wording of it was. Oh, okay. <laughs> How do we lay our lives down for the brethren? Okay, and so they did. They did a beautiful job addressing the question, and it's it is simple. <laughs> it's a simple, simple answer to the question. It's it's introducing your brethren to Yahshua. Okay, and there were lots of ways that people got into it. And granted, there was a lot of there were a, quite a few first timers that were in Orlando and they stayed to, at each of the classes. There actually was one um, that joined the combined choir at the end, which was amazing. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Um, but it was, it was amazing to see the spirit moving people. And um, I'm just going to get a little bit of what uh, was taught while we were there and then take my seat. Um, but one of the ways to introduce someone to Yahshua is by teaching his gospel. Okay, and can you get um, First Corinthians? And so out in the world, and I did grow up in a Christian background, but out in the world, you are taught as a Christian that gospel of the Messiah is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay, so when you're reading this, it takes a much different light as a Christian than what it actually means. And it's very strange because it tells you exactly tells you exactly what it means right in that scripture. I'm not quite sure where where things went wrong. Well I do. Uh, this is first Corinthians but. fifteen and one. <laughs> Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Yahshua died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay. And so it's that death, burial, and resurrection. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things, and I thought it was absolutely beautiful, <laughs> was they were talking about Noah here, okay? And we know the story of Noah, but there is that death, burial, resurrection, okay? Mm -hmm. And a vision was given to Noah about what was going to happen, okay? And then Noah preached for 120 years what was going to happen, okay? And it seems easy enough, but it's getting... And, and, we are in that position too, okay? We are in a very small, small number of people, okay? And to get out there and to preach that name and preach the gospel and preach the pattern, it's not widely accepted, okay? And Noah was teaching that it was going to rain, okay? Eight people, eight people, including himself, got into that ark. Okay? Mm -hmm. But for 120 years, he laid his life down mm -hmm. for the people because that was their only form of salvation. Okay, Yahshua is salvation. That's what Yah or Yahweh is salvation. Right. That's what Yahshua means. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. that was that was their form of salvation through that preaching of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you get in here, you shall live. Okay, mm -hmm. and so you've got. Um, and they were going through quite a few of them. But you've got Moses here, okay? And, and every single one of them is putting themselves in a situation where, you know, Moses, and I'll give the example with Moses, because it's right here on the chart, okay? And so Moses was here, and he actually grew up in the house of Pharaoh, okay? Um, and actually, can we just get that? Let's just get our witnesses. <laughs> If we can. Just um, Exodus 1 and 1 is fine. And you can skip okay. down a little bit to where he's found by Pharaoh's daughter and she gets a nurse to his mother is Moses' nurse, but at a certain age he goes and lives with Pharaoh or Pharaoh's daughter or in the house of Pharaoh.
probably two one. Oh yes, um, Exodus two and one. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. She laid it in the flags by the river spring. Okay, so stop for just a, okay. for a second. And I'm going to, I may get totally right. off track at this point. <laughs> but you have, we just talked about that ark of salvation, okay? Yes. And what they're talking about here is... Um, a death decree was put out on the babies, the Hebrew male mm -hmm. babies, okay? And it's talking about putting that baby in an ark, <laughs> if you will, okay? A form of salvation for mm -hmm. him, okay? So again, Yahshua, keep going. Um, five, and the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew woman, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. Um, and the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. Okay. So that's, that's the part that I wanted. Yeah. So... Moses actually, and, and she knew, she knew it was a Hebrew baby, but she took him, mm -hmm. okay, and it was her own baby. Right. It was her own child, okay? And so he grew up in, in Egypt, in the court of Egypt, okay? And he ends up, and can you find where he ends up slaying the um, Egyptian? Thank you. Yes. So let me finish 10. At the bottom of 10 is, Perfect. and she called his name Moses, and she said, because I drew him out of the water. Okay. 11, and it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Okay. So he slew an Egyptian, and then he fled, okay? He left. Yes. And so he is given that name, okay? He's given the name and told to go down into Egypt and let those people go. Right. Okay, but when he goes down into Egypt, he's, he's nervous for, with, <laughs> with reason. He, he killed an Egyptian. He doesn't want to go back down there, okay? But he's been told, I will be with you, okay? Yahshua, or Yahweh tells him, I will be with you. And so he goes down, okay? And he continually lays his life down for his brethren, okay? There, were, there are times that those people throughout this whole process, well, not this process, but throughout this process, they tried to rise up against him, okay? Yeah. And all, all he was doing the whole time, and actually, can you get me the, um, oh, goodness, it's in my phone, the verse. There is a, a verse where he actually does try to lay his life down for the brethren. It's um, after they build the golden calf. Okay. Okay. And so um, there's, mul I mean, there's multiple times, but this is, this is a beautiful instance of it, okay? And so he's, he's up here in the mount, and he's got these 70 elders watching. He's got Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu. They're all, they all see the same thing, or they see, they all see the same thing, okay? And they come back down here after Moses is in that mount, and they build the golden calf, okay? So clearly they did not see and understand. They saw, but they didn't understand. A revelation wasn't given to them on what they were seeing, okay? So they build this golden calf, and Moses is, is told as he's up here, there's a cry of war. <laughs> he's like, no, they're just having a party, 
but he gets down here and they <laughs> built a golden calf and he's he's angry <laughs> okay mm -hmm. and so he actually goes up in the mount and that's where i want is when he goes up into the mount and pleads Exodus for them 32 31 and moses returned unto yahweh and said oh this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold yet now if thou wilt forgive their sin and if not blot me i pray thee out of the book which thou hast written okay so he asks he asks for his name to be blotted out of the book yeah. okay save <laughs> save them take my name out of the book okay and actually i'll let you i'll let you stop there but thank you <laughs> but so so he he is willing to take or put his life down on the line for his brethren right okay and so you've got multiple instances of that and then um the other one gotten was uh and you could you could use just about and you can use joseph you can use mm -hmm. just yes. about <laughs> just about any person that's that's gone through mm -hmm. okay because it's line upon line line upon line yeah. okay and so they used um david and goliath though because that's mm -hmm. that's a beautiful mm -hmm. i mean it's just a, a beautiful example of it and so you've got that goliath and so you know he was oh goodness was he nine foot six inches okay which is that's a a big man mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a big dude mm -hmm. and he was built for war he grew up in a place that that's what he would i mean he was groomed to be a warrior mm -hmm. okay and you've got a small shepherd mm -hmm. that is willing to go up against him okay and no one else wants to do that okay goliath is taunting them and mm -hmm. you know that's whoever they will let the israelites be if someone can beat goliath right that's the that's the challenge you're fine if you can beat me and so he's taunting them he knows he knows that not not any of the not even their warriors can take him mm -hmm. and david just sure mm -hmm. i'll do it mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so he gets mm -hmm. up there and he's willing to give his life for mm -hmm. those people okay and i mean yahweh yahweh's takes care of him and he knows that he he's got a gift okay yeah. and he can with the witnesses that yahweh gave him he can beat goliath okay but you've got another example of of someone laying their life down for his brethren mm -hmm. okay and you can do um oh goodness i mean it all it all points it all points to yes to yahshua laying his life down for yes. us but if you don't have people to preach <laughs> that death burial resurrection death burial resurrection death burial resurrection that gospel over and over again no one's going to see that okay our our job for laying down our, our laying down our lives is just getting up and preaching that gospel okay just showing someone something okay and so i'm just going to get uh no i'm not going to get it because it's a totally different line and i don't want to <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna stick with the gospel and and let that be it but um i'm just gonna go to one other thing just because it's what's happening right now right. um and then i will take my seat and this was gotten a few times too and again it was just the simplicity of that gospel being preached okay and so a few people got um that butterfly mm -hmm. the metamorphosis of this butterfly okay and so you've got the caterpillar you've got the chrysalis which the caterpillar goes through a death and i'm going to go over to the board and show you guys some things but so the caterpillar goes through a death mm -hmm. it's buried in that chrysalis and it resurrects as a new creature mm -hmm. okay which is the transformation that we are wanting to happen for us okay we don't want to we don't want to stay on this earth bound 
for for our our lives right we are we are hoping for a resurrection okay and so you've got these and I mean they're tiny I don't know how many people have seen a and I'm only working with a monarch I, I don't I've never seen another but those monarchs they start off real small <laughs> I don't know how my children I, they must have really good eyes kids must have really good eyes they can they can spot the tiny ones I can't but they're they're small and in just a small period I want to say it's like two weeks long they grow to not a giant size but they still grow to a mm -hmm. a decent they're they're pretty I mean from there to there it's a it's a change okay and they do it because they're just eating and eating and eating and eating and can you get Isaiah 8 and 1 no 28 is that 28 9 and 10 Justin yeah Let's see if I can make that bigger I want to Isaiah 28 and 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Those who are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. To whom he said, this is the rest by which you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. I could have stopped earlier, but it's just pretty. <laughs> so I did it. <laughs> but, but so you've got them be, or we are weaned from the milk, okay? Mm -hmm. And these caterpillars, what they are eating when they're on the earth is milk weed, okay? You've got them being an example of what we are doing, okay? And so they're just eating and eating and eating, and we know that the... Um, weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast it's an example of the law and the prophets okay right. so they're eating and eating and eating all that they can while they're earthbound okay and when they get big enough they go and they hang upside down and if you've never seen it they actually bloat okay they, they get bigger they actually turn blue like they black and blue up a little bit and it looks like they're dead I thought for sure, <laughs> thought, for, thought for sure the first time we did it, I killed the caterpillar. <laughs> it's like, I've killed it, I will never see the transformation. Uh, but so what they do is they hang in this J, okay? Which is confusing, because in the earth plane, there are not very many examples of a J, okay? So I was puzzled by this. But so they hang, and while they're in that state, that's when they start to go through that death like state and then what happens is before the flesh peels off them they actually straighten up okay they go they straighten right out and then they peel that flesh away and so just as we and I can't say we because I know some people didn't grow up with Jesus being what they were taught but I certainly grew up with Jesus being who I worshiped as I was younger okay and so as I grew up with Jesus being who I worshiped when I was younger with the law and the testimony and the preaching of the gospel and the preaching of that tabernacle and all the witnesses that Yahweh has lined up that J no longer is something that was what I believed in and so he straightens you right up and takes that flesh away okay and that's the only example of a J I can think of in the creation. But, but so it, it peels away and that caterpillar goes into a chrysalis. Okay, it's buried in that chrysalis. And that chrysalis, if you've never seen the chrysalis of a monarch, it's got a beautiful golden, they're just beautiful golden dots all at the top of it. Okay, and it's a golden crown, if you will. And when it comes out of the chrysalis and it's in there for again about two weeks long it's in there and we when we do um the butterflies 
we usually bring them into the house and so that we can monitor and the kids can kind of see the whole process. And when it is a sunny day and a sunny week, that transformation is very fast. It, it speeds up when it's sunny. However, when it's dark and dreary, it really draws. <laughs> It takes a while for them to emerge because the process with the sun, okay, mm. our process, the more that sun, the more that sun <laughs> is shining on us, the more light that we have, okay, mm -hmm. we're talking spiritually, mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the better the transformation is for us, okay, and the quicker the transformation is for us. However, for some, okay, the transformations takes a little longer <laughs> you know you're still getting some light just you know it's just a longer transformation mm -hmm. okay but you know what as long as you get to the resurrection part that's all that that's really right. matters that's okay right. and so that chrysalis it will darken it actually gets really dark and again you think that you've killed whatever's inside and we actually have one that sat for a year in that chrysalis in the dark state it never did anything else and it just never went through the full transformation but after a little while that chrysalis becomes transparent and you can see the butterfly inside okay and when it comes out of the chrysalis and we always put a uh, paper towel underneath okay and this was people were really blown away by this this information but you put the paper towel underneath and when it comes out and emerges from there it sheds blood or blood and water okay hmm. blood water and then once it is dry from that blood and water it can take off okay and you've got the spirit so you've got the you've got the gospel being preached many many times yes. <laughs> just with that that butterfly but it's just a beautiful example of that gospel being preached every year <laughs> mm -hmm. and we we are blessed to be in an area where we can can see that and then something else cool about them and then I'll sit down um, is we know that there were um, four generations that it took to get up to Canaan's land okay and with a butterfly, there are four generations of butterflies that go through the migration. Yes. They start in Mexico, okay, and then they go up into about Florida, okay, then the next generation goes up a little further, and then the last generation is the generation that's here and in Canada right now, and that generation will go back to Mexico, and they'll start the whole process ah, again. So if you've got that four four generations and four generations and so it's just he's locked it up tight <laughs> and so with that I will turn it over to the next speaker hallelujah who's calling okay Our next speaker will be Dr. Rob Faulkner from the Art Pork Branch. How is it? Good? How's that? Like to say hello to everybody. Hi, Rob. Um, and uh, probably won't be up here very long, but I got something that's been on my mind for a few years now, and um, I'm going to express it. <laughs> Hopefully, it don't take very long. <laughs> um, but one of the things that um, has had a great impression on me in this school, I've been in, in the school a long time. Not that it means anything, because we've got an older gentleman in our class that. Um, I gotta tell you, 
the guy come in here, he probably was in his 60s, and he was a big Christian and gave up that name Jesus when he found out and checked out the name was Yahweh and Yahshua. When he gets up, his testimony is, I checked it out, and the name is Yahweh and Yahshua. So it isn't how long you've been here or anything. I'm not 60 yet, but close to it. And you don't change my mind pretty much in anything anymore. You can ask the guys that work for me. <laughs> it's uh, but anyway, um, I was had the the opportunity to go to the um, internet, the last international convention before Dallas, which was in Washington D.C. Dr. Kinley was still in the flesh at that time, and I was 13 years old at the time. And there's one thing that I remember in that seminar or convention, and um, I want to express that. There was a children's class, and I wish I knew who this person was, and someday maybe I'll find out, maybe I won't, but there was a children's class, and they got a bunch of kids up. I didn't get up. I had a lot more fear then than I do now, and did not get up, but a lot of kids got up. And there was a young lady that probably was close to my age that got up and expressed something that I, has made an impression on me since I've been here, and that's what I want to talk about a little bit. Let's get First Corinthians or First John five, seven and eight. <clears throat> but one of the things she got up there and she was talking about is, uh, and they had a lot of kids, very little ones, up to I believe this Sylvester Hampton. I don't know if you know him, but I think that he was the last speaker, the kids' class. And I believe he was probably about fifteen or sixteen at the time, um, and they had a lot of them. But this girl probably was 13 or 14 and she went to this chart and she said I come to class and Dr. Kinley pounds on this chart and he said there's blood water spirit there's blood water spirit well out of all the things that it could have made an impression on me that did and that's the only thing I really can remember that ever happened in 1975 um, that uh, uh, we did go to Dr. Kinley's room and I just remember sitting by the door and couldn't hear a thing that was said, so I was too far away. But, but I do remember this blood, water, spirit, and it's made an impression on me. And I've really been thinking about it the last few years, how important is it, it is to know it really explains the purpose of Yahweh. Let's go to First Corinthians or uh, First for, John five. First John five and seven. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Now there are three that bear record in heaven. See, read. The Father. See the, the Father. The Word. The Word. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And these three are one. See, and it's painted over here on this chart right here. See, it's to get you the unity of the Spirit. And look, Christianity, they got God being three different people, and they got all kinds of... I went to a funeral uh, yesterday, and... It, there's just all kinds of crazy stuff. The first thing the minister, the, it was a priest, the first thing he wanted to do was, he, he had three things, I don't remember they all. But the first thing he said is, we've got to pray to God, let him welcome Kelly into heaven. You know, and so that's what we had to do. We had to pray to welcome, so he'd welcome, welcome this person into heaven. But look, there's three that bear record. The Father, read. The there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And these three are one, see? It's a unity, you know, and we've all been here. Yahweh, see? Pure Spirit. And it's right in the moderation. And that's one of the things, if you want to know about a class or good, what's going on around here, what, are, are we doing what Yahweh wants and the way this was set up? Do, you, do, you, do we do the moderation? Are we uh, it, heeding to the moderation in the aims? See, in one of the things in the moderation, it talks about how that Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive him in this state, this state of existence, he took on shape and form right within himself. See, we got people that, that, that won't even listen to the moderation, and they've got shape and form here. Well, that's not what the moderation says. Right. See, now look, he took on shape and form within himself. Read. And these, and oh. there are. I got, I, I'm ahead of myself. Sorry. See, and then <laughs> later on, see, that shape and form took on a fleshly body. See, but these three are one. Right. See, read. And there are three that bear witness in the earth. Now, there's three that bear witness in the earth. What are they witnessing to? What are the three that bear witness in earth witnessing to? Unity of the Spirit. See, 
That's right. Yes. The three that bear witness in heaven. heaven. The right. Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Now, what are them witnesses? Mm -hmm. Read. They bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. See? The Spirit, and the water, and the blood. Mm -hmm. And look, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but look. In Christianity, they've got Jesus resurrected a physical body. But if you looked at the pattern that Yahweh set up, blood, water, water spirit, spirit, it's not blood, water, splash. <laughs> See? So he set up this blood, water, spirit. See? Now look, we've got the tabernacle, and that's in the moderation how that we show how everything that um, goes according to this tabernacle pattern. See? And we have an altar here. And, and this is another thing, too. Dr. Kinley had this chart painted first and taught for a number of years just off this one chart. See? Now look, and, and I remember that girl saying he's up here pounding blood, water, spirit. See? Well, if you look across this chart, you'll see right here in the tabernacle, he has blood written there. See? Now they offered up sacrifices there. They had to kill the sacrifice. That's the principle of blood. See? And then you got the labor of water where they washed off the sacrifice. Blood and water. See? And then that horn of holy anointing oil signified the spirit was up on the priest. So you had blood, water, spirit. And, there was, and, and, and there's another witness you could go. There's 40 steps in, 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 the, in the holy place. So you got blood, water, spirit, 40. See? Just what's it witnessing to? The Father, um, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. See, blood, water, spirit. Now we can go across this chart. I hope somebody's got some water. Oh, <laughs> oh thank you. We uh, go across the chart and we take the migration of the children of Israel. And this is one thing before we go any further. Because it's not about a bunch of um, uh, parroting or a bunch of, oh, I can remember blood, water, spirit. And, and if you read your Bible, it, it's amazing if you see these principles and you read your Bible. You'll see verse after verse, you have blood, then water, then spirit. It's a pattern. But look, nobody has come into existence from a physical standpoint, see, without blood, water, spirit. And before you were conceived, see, there was blood involved. And look, there's nobody, a, a woman, there's a lot of stuff, there's a whole bunch of ways you can do this. Because Yahweh's just filled this, we're compassed about such a great witness. But there's no way that a woman can get pregnant without a blood sacrifice first. See? But look, the other thing is, is a man can't get a woman pregnant without blood. See? And then there, there, there's got to be some fluids or liquid, blood, water. See? And there's some heavy breathing going on. Blood, breath means spirit. Blood, water, spirit. Then when the baby, that's just the baby being conceived. Right. See, and here's the thing is, that's life. And that's why I'm trying to show you how there's no life without blood, water, spirit. See, and look, when the baby's born, there's a show of blood. Yeah. See, and then the bag of water breaks. Everybody knows this. Yeah. See, and then the baby hopefully takes on a breath of life and breath mean in spirit. There's no life without blood, water, spirit. From a physical standpoint, the baby's in there for 40 weeks. And this is the whole point. See, these principles, what we want to sh see is how that, see, when they offered up a sacrifice, it was blood. There was water. And then the horn of holy oil. oil. Then the priest would go up and make intercession for the people. There was no life without blood, water, spirit. Because there was no atonement. See? So you go over here to the children of Israel, see? Now they're in bondage, or in a death-like state. But they're down here, and before they can get out of Egypt, Yahweh tells them up to offer up a lamb, see? So they got a principle of blood, and they've got to take that lamb's blood. Let's read the book. They've got to take the principle, or the uh, lamb's blood, and they've got to base it at the door. They're basing it at the foot of the door, and they, they hit the top side post, the t and the top post, the other side post. See, you got four points of blood on that door. See, just like you had four horns of blood here on the, on the altar. But you got blood. See, now look, our pattern shows how that the next thing in operation is, they go to the part of the waters of the Red Sea. So you got blood, water, and look, how did they get out of there? 
but the spirit of Yahweh in that cloud. Yes. Blood, water, spirit. Showing how that there's no life without blood, water, and spirit. And look, you try to say, I've got to get a drink of water. <laughs> there's no life. See, and if I didn't have blood running through my veins, there wouldn't be any, I wouldn't be here. And I'm starting to breathe a little heavy. <laughs> see? So you got spirit. But look, could you imagine? See, this is like really, we come in here dead. Because we don't know nothing about Yahweh. We have to even learn what death is. Because we think death is somebody laying there in the casket. You know. But we come in here dead, see. And so, you know, or at least sick, but we're dead. But here's the thing is, could you imagine going to a hospital and you're, you're pretty close to dead, see, and, and you need some blood. We don't got no blood. You know, you need an IV. We don't got no water. See, you need some oxygen. Don't have any oxygen. See, that's the first thing they do in the hospital. Yeah. They start checking your blood, checking your breathing. See, checking your urine. Blood, water, spirit. Yeah. See, now look, you got blood, water, spirit in the tabernacle. Blood, water, spirit. And they're in the wilderness of Sinai for 40 years, just like 40 steps here. Then you got Noah and his family, see? And look, when we come down to class, we learn how that blood isn't always red stuff. See? Now let's get Ezekiel 36. And, and in, in the prayer, she was picking up, and, I, and it's in the scripture reading too, but um, about the simplicity of this thing. Mm -hmm. This thing is simple. You know, he's paying, this is what he's seen in the vision. And I was reading a transcript just recently how that he said that he tried to write this vision down in a, and, and I know they had the textbook, when he, but when, after he had, first had his vision, he tried to write this down. And he said, ah, I, I couldn't do it. I had to get it painted on the chart. See? And he said, people later come and they could see, because they could see the vision for themselves, it caused them to be able to understand better. Yes. See, and I look across this chart and I see how that there's blood. See, water, spirit. And he put it right on here. You got blood. See, the Red Sea, water uh, in that cloud. See, and he's got it right here written. It's, that's what he's seen. We're getting to partake of the vision that Dr. Kinley had or was given to by Yahweh himself. Right. See, these charts are something. Yeah. You know, sometimes we... We don't think that, well, and look, we're, we're, we're all been here and, and, and see, people use these as rack drop anymore. But look, if you look at this, this is the vision Yahweh gave Dr. Kinley. See, blood, water, spirit. Blood, water, spirit. Now we're here with Noah. See, let's, uh, Ezekiel 36, please. Ezekiel 36, 24. For I will take you from among no, the heathen. No, that's not it, is it? I want where uh, the blood is on. I'll look at the chart because it's probably written right up here. It's Ezekiel 33, 4. <laughs> That's how simple Dr. Kinley made it. See, I should have just looked at the chart. It's right over here. It's Ezekiel 33, 4 through 6. Then whosoever hears the sound of the trumpet and takes that Start up warning, a little bit from there. I'm sorry. One. Start right at one. 33, 33 and, one. and one. Again, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their borders and set him for their watchman, if, when he sees the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people... Then whosoever hears the sound of the trumpet and takes not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. Now look, if, if you're set up to be the watchman, see, and in, 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 in the military, that's what they have, people setting up watchmen, and you see the enemy coming, and you, you warn everybody, and they just stay in bed, the blood, it, this is what the verse says, it says the blood is on their head. Right. See? But if you do warn them and they don't take warning, then the blood's on their own head. But here's my point is, you got a principle of how that Noah, see, he had a vision from Yahweh. And Yahweh told them, look, we got to build this ark. He's going to destroy the earth with a flood. See? So he put the blood on the people's heads. you got a principle of blood. 
See, because they didn't heed to the word. See, they, they um, went on about their own and wickedness was... But you know what? Here's one thing that Dr. Kinley said. Is the wickedness today is worse than the wickedness back in those times. See, but this was a wicked... But we got a lot of wickedness today too. So you got a pencil of blood. See, and then you've got the flood. See, what's that water? See, blood and water. And you can read right in the book how that it says that the Spirit of Yahweh closed that door of that ark. See, so you got blood, water, spirit. See, um, read Genesis 7 7. That's probably where it says that Yahweh closed the door, but we'll see. And, and, and the reason I'm pointing this out on these verses here on the chart, that's how simple he made the vision. You know. Did talk about the door being closed? Seven, right? seven. It, yeah, 16, 7 and 16. Okay, go ahead and read that. Um, and they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as Yahweh Elohim had commanded him, and Yahweh shut him in. Okay, see, Yahweh shut that door. Right. So you got the principle of that spirit, blood, water, spirit. And it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. See, and I remember when I first came to class, we'd run topics. And one of the tops, why is there so many 40s in the Bible? Because Yahweh operates by a pattern. See, now look, without blood, water, spirit, there was no life. Without blood, water, spirit, there was no life. Without blood, water, spirit, there was no life. See, now let's back up here. We got Melchizedek's priesthood, Salem, and we'll work Abraham and Isaac with that because Melchizedek uh, anointed Abraham. But you got Abraham and Isaac, and Yahweh tells Abraham to offer up Isaac. See, but instead of Isaac being offered up, see, there's a ram caught in a thicket, and they kill that ram. So what do you got? Principle of blood. Now, Abraham is an old man, and he's got to climb up a mountain. See, he's sweating. And I'll just give you a little story about sweating. One time it was about 10 degrees outside, and um, we were moving. And I had to move a refrigerator. It was just me and my wife and daughter, and I had to move this refrigerator upstairs. And uh, so I'm doing most of the work. And <laughs> so we're moving this up. I hope so. And, and uh, my daughter says, Mom, it's 10 degrees out, and he's sweating. <laughs> see, there's sweat involved, water. See, so you got a principle of, of, of blood with that lamb dying. See, you got uh, uh, Abraham sweating, see, or water. See, and then that spirit of Yahweh says to Abraham, don't, don't kill your son. See, so you got blood, water, spirit. See, and uh, Ishmael was 40 years old when that took place. Mm -hmm. And then you got Adam, see. Now Adam, he's in the garden. And <clears throat> perfect peace, see. And then Eve touches the fruit, then Adam takes it. He spreads the blood over the four corners of the earth. So you got a principle of blood. And then what does he have to do? He has to clear the land, or the sweat of his face. See, he's right. clearing, clearing the land. See, water, see. And then uh, uh, the spirit is uh, Michael um, um, keeping them out of the garden, or that angel. Blood, water, spirit. See, blood, water, spirit. Blood, water, spirit. Blood, water, spirit. See, and then you got Yahshua the Messiah. And he comes in, and as soon as he gets into his ministry, right, what happens is they say, Behold, the Lamb of Yahweh right. that taketh away the sin of the world. See, what happened to the Lamb here? They killed it. See, there was the blood there. See, and then he's baptized in the Jordan River. Right. You got water. See, blood, water. And then that uh, uh, spirit. See, um, uh, uh, became out in John as a, or uh, in Yahshua, see, he said, um, as a dove. So you have blood, water, spirit. And then he's up here in the wilderness, or in the, see, I say the wilderness of Sinai, <laughs> because it's the same principle. See, they were in the wilderness here for 40 years. He was in the wilderness for, and they were being tested or tempted of the devil. See, right here, 40, 40 days he's in the wilderness. See, now this, these are, there's three that bear witness in the earth. Blood, water, spirit. And they're witnessing to the Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim, and Yahshua. Now you come down here and Yahshua 
as he is going through his actual death, burial, resurrection. And we're not going to get it, but you can read it. I believe it's over in the 19th chapter of John. It talks about how that Yahshua was pierced in the side, and out came blood and water. Why does it say that in the Bible? Why does it say blood and water? Why didn't it say they pierced... Why does it just say they pierced him in the side? Right. But it says, out came blood and water. So you got blood and water. See, and you got um, him resurrected, a spiritual body, or you've got, he gave up the ghost. But you got blood, water, and spirit. See, and he was in his resurrection for 40 days. See, you got Jews Pentecost. Look, and come up, check this out here with Jews Pentecost. Because in Jews Pentecost, he's got them eating the Passover supper here on this plate. That's how he painted it. Well, that took place back here. See, what's he got it here for? Because they understand, see, the blood now. See, and he, when he said, take this blood, see. Um, now they understand the blood. And they understand, see, and when he's washing their feet with water, they don't know, they don't, he even tells them, you don't know what I'm doing. Now they understand. See, and look, here's something with the feet, too. And maybe you've heard it, maybe you haven't, but it's worth hearing again. Because this is about soul salvation. This is about your soul being saved and delivered from darkness. See, and the only way it's going to happen is through blood, water, and spirit. See, but here's the thing is, your foot, see, is uh, the bottom of your foot they call a soul. And so what Yahshua was doing back here with the disciples is he's washing their soul. See, and look, there's teachings out there now that you're going to stay in the lake of fire and he don't care about you. And that's, see, well, no, you see, your soul can be cleaned up. See, and look, it started out stinky. You get home from work, it stinks. But, you, you know, you wash it and get rid of that stink, see. But actually, on the back of your soul, they call it a heel. See, so there's a heel on your soul. See. So what was he doing washing their feet? See, blood, and then wash their feet, water, see, and then they received that Holy Spirit. See, on the day of Pentecost, blood, water, spirit. See, then you've got uh, 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 um, uh, persecution of the, of the Jews, see, and you've got, uh, it's hard because the chart we have says persecution of Jews right here. <laughs> 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 but you got the persecution of the Jews here, see? And so what you got is you've got um, um, uh, Stephen being stoned. And we read, we've read that for years. We pick up how that Stephen was talking about the tabernacle of witness and how that he was preaching about the tabernacle. Well, Stephen was killed, see, at the persecution of the Jews. You got a principle of blood here, see? And then you got Philip, see? He's baptizing the Ethiopian eunuch. And you got Christianity running around there saying, oh, he baptized. See how he baptized the Ethiopian eunuch? But it never said, and that's not where you're going to pick up spirit in the story. After he baptized the Ethiopian eunuch, he received the Holy Spirit. That's not what it says. See, it says that once he baptized the Ethiopian eunuch, see, because you got a principle of water there, then that spirit took Philip out away. So you got blood, water, and spirit. Then you got the uh, Gentiles Pentecost, see? And you got James being killed. See, you got a principle of blood, see? And then um, uh, Peter, when he's preaching to the Gentiles, let's get this with Peter. I want, uh, and, and look, I'll tell you with the Jews, Jews uh, uh, persecution, you can take, I believe it's Acts 9, 10, and 11, and you'll find blood, water, spirit. And then you can go... Uh, 12, 13, and 14. And if you go back from 14, 13, and 12, 13 is going to be blood, 12, or no, is it? They go back anyway. So blood, water, and spirit. But you've got James being killed. Blood, see? And then uh, Peter says, can any man forbid thee water? That's I think it's an 11. X. 10 and 47. Okay. Can any man forbid water? Okay. Can any man forbid thee water? See? Yeah. Because he's thinking they got to um, uh, uh, be, look, they, all the Jews that had the Holy Spirit, they seen at John's baptism. Right. 
See, they were the ones that received the Holy Spirit, the ones that were John's baptism. Yes. They were the first ones to receive the Holy Spirit. So they're looking at, okay, they were physically water baptized. They're the, all the ones that have the Holy Spirit. So <laughs> it's right on the line of, so Peter says, geez, they received, the, they must have to be baptized. But then he goes over and he's rehearsing this, right? And what I want to pick up is, and it might be an 11. I wish I had these words. I want where, as he's preached, the Spirit fell upon the, them okay. just like us at the beginning. 11 and 15. Okay, thank and you. as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them as on us at the beginning. Now look, what's this teaching about? It's about preaching blood, water, spirit, death, burial, resurrection. How Yahshua fulfilled the law and the prophets. What do you think Peter was preaching to him? Right. That we got to dunk you in water? No, he was teaching how the Yahshua came in and fulfilled the law yes. and the prophets. He was an apostle. He was an eyewitness. See, we use Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Well, they weren't written when Peter was preaching to the Gentiles. He's saying, this is what we've seen. And it's written back there in the law and the prophets. And as he preached that, the Spirit fell upon them as it did them in the beginning. But he said, can any man forbid thee water? And he says, let's go over, I think it's in 12, when he says... Um, when he's rehearsing, and he says to him, uh, um, then I remembered I. Oh, that was in 16. Okay. Uh, 11, 16. Then remembered I, the word of Yahshua, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Oh, see, he remembered how that John baptized with water, but you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. See, so you got blood, water, spirit. See. Um, here with um, Gentiles Pentecost. And then you've got um, the apostasy, see? And it's really, it, it's strange because people got apostasy screwed up. Because when you left the Catholic Church, that wasn't the apostasy. It's when you leave the truth and go to the Catholic Church as the apostasy. And see, what do they want to do? They want to restore uh, these carnal ordinances or these blood sacrifices, see? Blood. They want to restore um, uh, 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 baptism Something. see blood water and it's that unholy spirit that's doing that mm -hmm. so you got blood water spirit I got one more thing and then I'll sit down because we're talking about basics I bought this at Walmart nice, nice. <laughs> and it's kindergarten basics and it's for ages five to six. So if you've been here five times, been here six times, it's for you. If you've been here 50 years, you've been here 60 years, it's for you. See? And if, you have, if this was your first time or your second time, you better come here at least five times. Because then you might understand this book. See? But what you got is... Um, oh. First thing is a field trip. See, so you got to draw a line. In the field trip, you got to take, you're on the bus, and you got to draw a line to where you're going on the field trip. Well, look, we, when we got here, and look, when we got to the thruway, they said, we're to the thruway now. See, but look, you went on roads. And this thing is, see how, let's, before I do this, I've got ahead of myself. I want uh, uh, Isaiah 28, 9 and 10. And, Isaiah and, 28 I, and 9. Uh, you know, and here's one of the things I want to, We had to put a walkway on a railroad bridge a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I've got, there was different panels that were in different places. And so um, I was off doing something, probably screwing off, I don't know. But my son kind of runs the crew. And so he's there and he's giving them the right panels. And th these kids that we had hired are putting the panels up. And so I get up there. When I get there, they're putting them up as fast as they can put them up. And, and I walk down through there, and these panels are going all over the place. And I said to him, I said, you can't pull these panels tight to each other? He goes, oh, we just, we just nailed them down where they were at. And I got thinking about it afterwards, and I'm like, you know, that was the first thing that I noticed is these aren't in a straight line. That's right. And they should have been in a straight line. Yes. But here's the thing is. In anything you do, when you type a letter, you don't type it all sideways and crooked. And That's right. It's all right in lines. 
There's, and look, when you go to work to type your letter, you have to go on a road and you have to stay between the lines. Mm -hmm. And that's what this teaching's about, staying between the lines. See, read. Whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Now, whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? See, the ones that are physically water baptized? See, the ones that are um, eating crackers and grape juice? See, crackers and grape juice don't make you think any different. See, being physically water baptized, whether you're two weeks, two months, or 20 years, or 40 years, you're not going to think any different. See, whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Read. Those who are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. Read. For precept must be upon precept. See how that precept of blood must be upon precept of blood? Yes. See, precept must be upon precept. Read. Precept upon precept. Line upon line, line upon line. See, line upon line, line upon line. And look, we're just showing you a principle of blood, water, spirit. There's a lot of principles down through here. Death, burial, resurrection. Right. See, giving up your life for another. See, there is so many lines. You'll never, ever, see, be able to get this mastered. See, but that's how he's going to teach you, line upon line, read. Here a little and there a little. See, here a little in the law. See, here a little in the pro. And look, the way the world's got it, the Bible's all messed up. Because they got the Old Testament, that's that mean God that nobody wants to have anything to do with. And then you got the New Testament, that guy, that guy is so just full of love. And man, he's the guy you want to get hooked up with. Yep. See, but if you see how that the Bible works, you're going to see that there's a principle of blood, water, spirit at the beginning of the Bible, blood, water, spirit in the middle of the Bible, and blood, water, spirit at the end of the Bible. Yep. See? Go ahead and read. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. For with stammering lips. See how that, and I, I, I have a really good friend of mine that works with me. We worked for years together, and he stutters. And I don't even catch it anymore. I don't even realize he's stuttering, you know. And, uh, but anyway, that's what, see, blood, blood, bl blood, blood. See, what, see how stammering lips and another tongue? Yeah. That's in the Bible. See, read. To whom he said, this is the rest by which ye may cause the weary to rest. Now he said, this is the rest. This is the rest. See, you want rest? See how that he set up a principle of blood, water, spirit. Blood, water, spirit. And look, when you cut yourself, do you go, oh, oh, no, you got some blood. So you go get some water and you wash it off and then you might put some ointment on it. See, because you know what? You just from a natural standpoint think blood, water, spirit. Just from a natural standpoint. Because you know what? You know that, 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 that okay, it's bleeding. I got to wash it off, but it's going to heal. Yes. Yeah. See, blood, water, there's life with blood, water, spirit. Yes. Right. See, read. This is the refreshing, yet they would not See, hear. This was the refreshing, but there's a lot more important things to talk about. There's a lot more important things to, to do in crackers and grape juice. And <laughs> See, no. no, this was a refreshing, but yet they wouldn't hear. Now look. I got this book and it's basics. See, and the way we got here, see, the first page is field trips. And so the way we got here is, and, and what you do is, it says, help the bus get to the zoo, draw a line to show the way. Yes. So you got to draw a line. That's the first page. See? So you go to the second page. See, and I was thinking, boy, this really relates, because uh, I, I never really realized why we did this. But the next thing is ship shape. And what you do is you draw lines between the shapes that match. Okay? Pattern. So you look at the shapes that match. So look, oh, there's a shape of blood here, and then you run a line over to the shape of blood here. Then you run a line of shape of blood over here. See? This is how they teach five-year-olds, or yeah, five to six-year-olds. See? And then draw lines between the shapes that match. See, now let's go to the next one. Okay, the very next page is out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> out of this world. <laughs> now, <laughs> see, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. This is out of this world. People don't realize that the power in this death, burial, resurrection, blood, water, spirit. See? 
So then, the next thing is, which are the same? So you circle the pictures that are the same. See, so what do you do? You go over here and you circle blood here. And you circle blood here. You circle water here. Because they're the same. Right. See how that they're the same? Mm -hmm. And that's how they teach them. And then the letters are the same. Then you do uh, uh, like the letters. See? And we learn how, because look, Yahweh's name isn't a bunch of letters. <laughs> it's an essence. Yeah. See? Um, let's see. I didn't get past that page, but let's see what it goes. In. Oh, perfect pairs. Perfect pairs is the next thing. Mm -hmm. So what do you got here? You look at this chart, see? And you got Moses having a vision here. And you got John having a business he vision here. And then you come down here, and it pairs up to Yahshua and the Mount of Transfiguration. Because see, Yahweh transfigured here. See? And Moses transfigured here. You got Yahshua transfigured. And over here you got uh, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, an elder, and... and uh, Brothers. Um, uh, two, brothers. two brothers. You got it now, Peter and, and James and John, two brothers. Yep. See? Mm -hmm. And what is it? Perfect pairs. Yes. Mm -hmm. Matches up. Mm -hmm. yep. See? And then, uh, oh, then you look at things that are a bit different. See? Mm -hmm. Now look, that mystery of iniquity, he don't want you to see. Where is that? Oh, right here. Mm -hmm. He's dumb. He don't want you to see that name of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. See, he doesn't want, he wants to show you how he could show you something different, mm -hmm. see, but it isn't going to do anything for your life. Right. But look, um, I, I, I seen this book in its basics, and it really is how we learn down here. And we're trying to, just like across all these charts, we're trying to show you how that, and he painted it's a vision, mm -hmm. how the things match up. The first part of the Bible, the second part of the Bible, and the end of the Bible, they go together. <laughs> See, and it really, with this blood, water, spirit, there is no life without blood, water, spirit. And I just appreciate that Yahshua, when I went to that 75 convention, and, uh, and I had, a, actually, I broke my leg a couple of days before that, and I wasn't in a lot of, I was in a lot of pain, actually, but that was the one thing that made an impression on me, is how that, that girl said, Dr. Kinley got up here and would pound on these charts, blood, water, spirit, blood, water, spirit. And I'm thankful. See, because look, and we, I, I don't know if we've all seen it, but there was a leader in this organization that said that you got to get up off from blood, water, spirit. He said that publicly. you got to get up off. And, and in, uh, I won't get it, but in, in the very last lecture, Dr. Kinley, uh, the very last lecture, December 21st, 1975, he, he said somebody that primarily was brought up in this school would tell you that you got to get up off in blood, water, spirit. And I want to show you how foolish that would be. See? And it would be just like, this don't work no more. See? But it does work. And that there's no life, no life without blood, water, spirit. If you, if you take one of them away, if you take the blood away, it ain't going to work. If you take the, the water away, it ain't going to work. If you take that breath of that spirit away, it ain't going to work. So how do you think it works spiritually? See? See, and it's really through the blood of Yahshua. And it doesn't necessarily have to be red stuff to see that there's a blood. And really, it comes down to laying your life down. See? And really, if you look, go back through these, I'll just throw this out, and I'll sit down. If you go back through these examples is, uh, of uh, them laying their life down is... Uh, Moses here, see, when he, he said, blot my name out of the book. Right. Let's read it real quick, and then I just want to throw this out. Because this is the thing is, he didn't want Yahweh to be dishonored. Is really what it was, is he didn't want Yahweh to be dishonored. And so, hey, you brought him up out of Egypt, then you killed them all? So he's saying, hey, blot my name out of the book. But look at how Moses reads it. And you can go back in, and you can look at Meshach, ben, Meshach, yeah, them guys. <laughs> and, and the same thing. They say, hey, look, we're going to worship Yahweh. Whether he, he's, he deliver, he'll deliver us, but if not, we're still going to worship Yahweh. 
because they didn't want Yahweh being dishonored. And the same thing with David. Read that please quickly. Exodus 32 and 31. And Moses returned unto Yahweh and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray See, he's, he, he's making intercession for the people. And he's saying, hey, look, um, if, 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 can you do, forgive their sin? But if not, blot me out. Because he didn't want Yahweh dishonored. See, and look, if you just see the principles of Yahweh, Moses knew that Yahweh was forgiving. Moses knew. That's why he went up and asked for forgiveness. Yes. But I just encourage everybody to continue to come to class and learn about Yahweh's purpose and plan. This chart, this chart right here is just full of principles. In, in our court, we've been working with the 40 play chart. It's full of principles. It's just, un, it, it's just so simple. Um, and I'm not going to get it, but in the scripture reading, it talks about how that, that mystery of iniquity will distract you from the simplicity of this gospel. We don't want to be um, distracted. That's right. Thank you. Oh, I got the mic, don't I? <laughs> Here, I'll let you take it off. After class, I'll tell you guys about a mic story. <laughs> Our next speaker this evening will be the Dean of the Ark Pork Branch, Dr. Bonnie Snyder. I can just about walk. Mm. Oh. <laughs> We're getting younger every day. <laughs> okay. 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 I guess. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? No, you can hear me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, what are you doing here? <laughs> Fired. <laughs> Fired. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, brethren. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be here and to uh, testify to the things that I've learned in this great teaching. And I certainly have enjoyed the first two speakers. Mm -hmm. Me too. Um, I have been reading the uh, transcript. I don't have it read all yet. It, amazingly, I've just been really, you know, running wild. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't had a lot of time. But um, we had a, a transcript given to us down there at the symposium, and it was on faith. Yes. And um, faith is one of my favorite subjects, actually. <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> um, I've been thinking a lot about that, so I'll just try to address that and see where it goes. And I, I don't have anything in particular in my mind, but we'll see what happens. Let me pick up, uh, is it Colossians, the first chapter, start right at 1. Okay. And then I want to get Romans 10. Your faith cometh by hearing. Colossians 1 and 1. Mm -hmm. Paul, Paul, an apostle of Yahshua the Messiah, by the will of Yahweh Elohim and Timotheus, Timothy, our brother. Okay, now when you're reading stuff, you want to you wanna know what you're reading, where you're reading, what time it is, who he's talking to. Didn't you ever learn that? Yes. That's what we learned in the school, right? Yes. And so go back and start again. I just want to explain something. Because not everybody takes this into consideration when they're reading stuff. See? Okay. Go ahead and read. Paul. An so this is from Paul. Yes. He's an apostle. Yes, of Yahshua read. the Messiah. Of Yahshua the Messiah, read. By the will of Yahweh. Elohim. By the will of Yahweh, read. And Timotheus, Timothy, uh -huh. our brother. So Paul's writing right in the beginning of the self-same age that we're in right now. Correct. The beginning of the age, after Yahshua the Messiah goes through his death, burial, and resurrection. Paul's writing this letter, right? Yes. That's the time we're looking at. Okay. Keep yep. reading. To the sons and faithful brethren in Yahshua. To the sons and faithful brethren in Yahshua. Which so that's class. who he's writing to. He's writing to people that are already resurrected from the dead. You know, a lot of people think this book's for everybody. It wasn't written to everybody. It was written to the sons. You understand? Yes. 
So to the sons and to the faithful brethren. In the and so Messiah. you want to find out what really being faithful is. Because you know, when we came through that door for the first time, we had an idea what faith was. And just like everything else that we thought, we had it completely wrong. <laughs> See? It's not based on you just believing on something that you don't know anything about or have never seen a witness for. It's not what it's about. Right. See? Keep reading, please. Uh, which are at Colossus. Uh -huh. Grace be unto you in peace from Yahweh our Father uh -huh. and Yahshua the Messiah. Read. We give thanks to Yahweh Elohim and the Father of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, praying always for you. Uh huh. Since we heard of your faith in now Yahshua the Messiah. Now, since we Messiah, heard of your faith. That's right. The sons have some faith. So we read that last verse again. Since we heard of your faith in read Yahshua the, the Messiah. Read up the verse again. We give thanks uh -huh. to Yahweh Elohim and the Father of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, praying always for you. Uh-huh. Since we heard of your faith. Since we heard of your faith, your sons, and you're supposed to have some faith. So since we heard of your faith, read. In Yahshua the Messiah. You have faith in Yahshua the Messiah. Not just blind faith. Right. And really what they were talking about, see, when you look at the witnesses that Yahweh has set up through the law of the testimony, and if you go right here to the tabernacle pattern and you see that there's that death right there, burial, resurrection with that holy anointing oil, come here to the children of Israel, see that lamb had to die, that's a death. They're buried in the part of waters of the Red Sea. They come up here and they worship Yahweh at this mountain and they resurrect out of there. Death, burial, resurrection. These things are witnesses. They're witnessing to Yahshua the Messiah's death, burial, resurrection. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. And so wherever you see, just like he's talking about blood here, blood here, blood here, blood here, that's a point of faith right there. When you see these things over and over again, that's what causes you to have faith Holy. in Yahshua. Because this is all about what Yahshua did all the way through the law, all the way through the testimony, all the way through the creation. You got the self same thing. Just like he told you about the blood, water, and spirit in your body and how you were conceived and all the rest of it. See, it all is, <laughs> it's all related to Yahshua the Messiah. And that's how you can find out and know him. And look, you have to know him. Get John 17 and 3. And I want you to stay where you are, Trisha. Yep. Please. <clears throat> and this is something I've been thinking about for a long time. The first aim of the school and the eighth aim of the school. The first aim of the school is to help you find and know Yahweh. That's right. Isn't that right? Yes. So you can know something. And it's a big, big thing in the world that you cannot know. Every Catholic that came in, and you know how many Catholics we got in here, and I wasn't a Catholic, but, you know, <laughs> the, you, they have testimony. All these Catholics. They couldn't know until they died. <laughs> And then all the Protestants are just a product of the Catholics. <laughs> so none of us thought we could know. And I'll give you a beautiful witness of my own testimony. When I first started reading the textbook when I was first in class, I don't know how long it was before I got one, maybe three or four. I, I don't even have any idea right now. But I would take this, say this is a textbook, and I'd read out of the textbook when I was home. I'd go to class. I'd write down all the scriptures, right? I'd read every scripture every single week. Because that's just what we did in those days. We were just so... <laughs> and Mitch made us. <laughs> he made us do it that way. <laughs> and so anyway... Oh, this is on tape. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> so anyway, I had a textbook. I'd read the textbook at home, right? I'd be reading along. And I'd see something in there, and I'd understand it. And I'd like, I can't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't... I was just like... The first thought I always had was, Yahweh's showing me? Yeah. And I just, it was so hard for me to get over it. He's showing me? And then, this is, you know, you're, you're reading it, you're like, you can understand? You can understand that this and this and this are one spirit? Get out! You know, and that was just, and so really what was happening to me was, I was getting rid of that that you can't know. I really had in my mind, you can't know these things. Right. Do you understand? Right. But yet I was getting rid of it. And it just dawned on me lately that that's what was happening to me. Right. And, and mm -hmm. so it, it was just, 
I'm just totally, oh my goodness, I can't believe it. And sometimes I just almost fall over. You just read something and understand it and you're like, I get that. Where did this come from? <laughs> Who's doing this to me? What is happening to me? Mm -hmm. And you know, you, it, it's just something to go through these things, but mm -hmm. it, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So anyway, let's read that first name quick. And then I want you to go to 17 and three. Because it is important that we recognize that we can know. Very important. Our first aim, to uh -huh. help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as so, he And you really know, this is. is another thing. These schools that have stuck to the truth, you've stuck to the aims of the school. That's what you're coming into the door for. And when you leave out here, your aims don't leave you. The aims of the sons of Yahweh are to accomplish these aims that have been given to us. Mm -hmm. To help you find and know Yahweh. Mm -hmm. That's why you, you, so you might not talk somebody to come into here, but you know what? You might see one of your friends and you might say, you know, would you like to go to class? Because I asked somebody to come to class with me tomorrow. She says, no, I can't do that. I'm like, really, you can't do that? <laughs> I don't get that. <laughs> She was really saying, yeah, we ain't going to let me do that, but you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can know. That yes. is the whole point of it. You can know. Okay, read, read. To help you find and know Yahweh. To help and these you aims, find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, uh -huh. as he really is and actually exists. As he really is and actually exists. And these things are important for us to hold on to. And these aims are important. That's right. We have something to do. You understand? Mm -hmm. And if you just want something just to do about them, just look, look up the words of the aims. Have you ever done it? It will just blow your socks off your feet. See? It expose your soul. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go to um, the John 17 and 3. John 17 and 3. Uh -huh. And this is life eternal. Now this, this is what the Messiah said. See? You've got Yahweh in his pure spirit state, which is attributes. Isn't that right? He takes on a super incorporeal shape and form, shows himself to Moses according to this tabernacle pattern, shows himself in the days of creation, comes right on down the physical body, fulfills the law and the testimony. This is what he is, this spirit in this body. Isn't that right? Yes. So you have this spirit in this body. Don't you think he's the one that you ought to listen to? <laughs> this spirit in this body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should listen to what he had to say. You understand? Mm -hmm. And it's the self-same Holy Spirit that was in Paul when Paul was talking. See? So this is what he had to say. Read it again. And this is life eternal. This is what life eternal is. This is what Yahshua said life eternal was. That's we right. can have an idea what it is. But we really need to see what he says about it. And people don't have a whole lot of respect about what he says about stuff. It's really sad. Read. That they might know thee, the only true Elohim. So that they might know. So if this is life eternal, that they may know. Do you think it's possible to know? Yes. It's kind of ridiculous that somebody even gives you an idea that you can't know. When he says it's life eternal, to know. Yes. And he came in to give you eternal life. Right. So would he be undermining himself by saying you can't know? Absolutely yeah, yeah. not. He's never going to say you can't know. You understand? So he says this is life eternal that you might know. Might know what? Read. The only true Elohim. The only true Elohim. You've got these attributes coming into a shape and a form. And on your 40 play chart, you might have it over here too. These are Mitch's, right? Okay. So you've got theosophy, which is divine wisdom, right? That's what this is. It's also the setting forth of first things. And then in the, in the, on the other plate, you've got Yahweh Elohim first. And well, anyway, you have the pattern. So he's setting forth of everything according to the pattern. That's how he did it. He comes setting forth everything. That's what divine wisdom is, folks. To set everything up according to a pattern. That's how he starts. Isn't that good? Yes. It's amazing to see something like that. 
And it's right here on this simple chart that we look at every week up here. He himself comes into a shape and form. That's, the, that's that divine wisdom right there. Then he shows himself to Moses according to this threefold intangible tabernacle pattern. See? And this is life eternal that you might know that. What? Read. That you might know thee, the only true Elohim. The only true Yahweh Elohim. That you might know him. Read. And Yahshua the Messiah. And you might know Yahshua the Messiah. And this is how you know him. Through this. What he did here. And that you might know Yahshua the Messiah. Whom he has sent down. Down where we are. Right. Self same spirit. Down where we are. Walking around. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Spirit comes down, walks around, talks. And it's life eternal for you to know him. And be in him. And be a son. And you can be. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. Now go back where you are. We're there. Colossians 1 and 4. Since uh -huh. we heard of your faith in Yahshua the Messiah. Since we heard of your faith in Yahshua the Messiah. And, and that's the thing. You must be in Yahshua the Messiah. And how do you get in Yahshua the Messiah? Let's get 2 Corinthians. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 3. 12, baptized into one body. 12. 12, 13. Thank you. Must be first Corinthians. Yeah, maybe first. Because we say these things. Oh, you must be in Yahshua. Well, how do you get in Yahshua the Messiah? Is it a magic trick? <laughs> first Corinthians twelve thirteen. Go. For by one Spirit were we all baptized into one body. By right. one Spirit. And look at he talked about Pentecost over here. How the, the Holy Spirit fell on the Jews and then the Holy Spirit seven years later fell on the Gentiles. And by the way, that, that covenant that he made with Israel back here, because this first covenant, even, this, even this, the covenant we're under now, was first given to the Jews. And it was confirmed for seven years. What does that mean? It was confirmed for seven years. That's in Daniel that it was confirmed for seven years. It's everything that was told to them Back here when he was walking around with them in the flesh, everything that was told to them. Okay, let's do it this way. Let's get an example. I'm not going to be able to get it otherwise. Uh, <clears throat> um, okay. Let's go to, uh, let's go back where Rob was with uh, Peter. And let's get uh, John 14, 26 first. Okay. This is still about faith. <laughs> John 14 and 26. Uh -huh. But the Comforter, who is the Holy Spirit. Now this is again Yahshua the Messiah speaking here. The Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. Because you have Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim, Yahshua. And Yahshua is the Holy Spirit manifest in or out of the physical body. So after he goes through his death, burial, resurrection, ascension, he pours out the Holy Spirit. And then seven years later, he pours out the Holy Spirit to the Gentiles. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Read. Whom the Father will send in my name. And that's another thing. The Holy Spirit has a name. His name is Yahshua. You understand? Mm -hmm. They don't know that. You know something? Your whole life, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. And you say, Lord, which is not the na a name. God, which is not the name. Jesus Christ, which is the erroneous translation of the name of Yahshua. <laughs> in the name of the Heavenly Father, in the name of the Son, Yahweh Elohim. In the name of the Holy Spirit, Yahshua. And the comforter. Mm -hmm. So what you're looking for when you're going to be at rest or be resurrected from the dead, you're going to be looking for the comforter in you. Isn't that right? Yes. And don't tell me you haven't used that comforter in you your whole life since you've been in glass. You've had hope because of this great comfort that you've had. You've had... <laughs> look at the things people have been through. Yes. Raised from the dead, for goodness sakes. <clears throat> Isn't that right? Yes. See? 
and all the things that have happened to us. Yes. And even the great split that took place, which was the worst thing that ever happened in my life. And I'll tell you, when you live a whole life of 70-some years, some things have happened to you. But that's the worst thing that ever happened to me. The worst. See? Read. I don't know what we read, so don't read. <laughs> <laughs> but the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, read. Whom the Father will send in my name. Whom the Father will send in my name. So the Holy Spirit has a name. Yes. That's why we bang on this name so much. Yes. He See? shall teach you all things. And look at this Holy Spirit is going to teach you all things. You know what? The Spirit's always been the teacher. The Spirit has always been the teacher. Didn't the Spirit back here of Yahweh Elohim reveal unto Moses what his name was? Yes. Did he teach him what the name was? Yes. Yes, he did. And you know, without a prophetic or a teaching vision, the people perish. That's right. See? And they were taught what they were supposed to do back here, you understand? This is a, he's always been a great teacher. There's one teacher, and it's Yahshua. See? So, read that again. Read the whole thing, and I'll try to shut up a minute. Read. <laughs> but the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. whom the Father will send in my name, uh -huh. he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. So, the Comforter is going to teach you all things, and he's going to bring all things back to your remembrance. Right. Whatsoever was taught unto them. Isn't That's that right? right. Yes. So, all the things that were taught to them when he's walking around with them for for those three and, a half, three years. and a half years. He's teaching them things, teaching them things, telling them things, teaching them things. And one of the things he taught them is, well, I'm washing your feet, but you don't know what I'm doing right now. But you know what? You're going to know later. Mm -hmm. He taught them that. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. So on the day of Pentecost, it's confirmed with Peter. Oh, he was washing my feet. Oh, I understand now. He's fulfilling feet washing. Because there was a foot washing back here at the mountain. See, didn't they, weren't they told to wash up back here? Yes. This is the foot of the mountain. That was foot washing back there. You understand that? <laughs> and, and other things. But he's fulfilling what it was that he did back here so that they would know that he was exactly the one that he said he was. Okay. Through that fulfillment. Isn't that right? Yeah. So the Holy Spirit, which, read that one last time again. The last part of it. Um, whom the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. He's going to teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance. And he's going to bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever Remember, was said unto, unto them. Unto and all those things that he taught them, he brought it back to the remembrance through That's those right. seven years. And the other thing he brought back was about that baptism. Mm -hmm. And the baptism was, if you go back there where he was already talking about, uh, then he remembered. Mm -hmm. Then he remembered I or I remember. Acts 11 and 15. Read. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them as, as us at the beginning. Okay, and so now this is the day of Pentecost of the, Jew, of the Gentiles here. See, read. Then remembered I the word of Yahshua, how he said, John indeed baptized what? with water. Then remembered I. How do you remember? He just all of a sudden remembered, oh yeah, way no. back there three and a half years ago, no, yeah, Yahshua said, I indeed baptized you with water, and you shall be baptized with water. Is that how we remembered it? No. Or did the Holy Spirit actually bring it back to his remembrance? That's right. That's how it was. <laughs> That's right. Yahshua brought it back to his remembrance. And so the covenant that, they, he, that they had, he had made with them was confirmed through all the things that happened on them right up until then. And then it just kept being unconfirmed, being confirmed. And even the way they went through stuff, you know they went through uh, a death and a burial and a resurrection, in the, and they were imprisoned, and it was like 10 years, one of them was in prison, I forget what, how it works, and then 10 years, it's on our chart at home, but the, the 40 play chart has, he's, he's 10, how is it Justin, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, Peter's, when Peter was in prison, oh, yes. the confirmation. confirmation. Peter confirms the resurrection of Yahshua because he's in prison 10 years after Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection. Then 10 years after that, Paul's in prison. And he goes through a death, burial, and resurrection. So Peter goes through a death, burial, and resurrection in, in whatever year it was. And then 10 years after that, Paul goes through a death, burial, and resurrection, confirming Yahshua the Messiah's death, burial, and resurrection. Can you see how the covenant's confirmed? 
And it's very important that these things are confirmed. Yes. It is. And with you and I, this is the self-same thing that happens. Every time you see something, and you see that it's accurate according to the law and the testimony, That's right. your faith is confirmed. Do you understand that? And you believe that Yahshua actually did go through this death. And you know why you believe it? Because you've seen it here, he went through this death. And you've seen it here, he went through this death. And you've seen it here, and here. And you've seen him be buried. And you've seen him be buried. Can you see how you're looking right at Yahshua doing this? When you look at it through the law and the testimony, you're seeing Yahshua actually doing it. He's always been the one doing it. So that's how you're being baptized in him. Can you see how that happens? Mm -hmm. Read that verse again, being baptized in him. First Corinthians 11 and or 12 and 13. And then there's, I think there's another one in Galatians and I want you to get that. Does anybody know where it is? For by one spirit were we all baptized into one body. Okay, now listen, this is what Paul's saying. By one spirit, and there never has been two spirits. Do you understand? It's always been Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. You know this spirit here that we call this other spirit, this negative spirit? What's something that's negative? Is negative substance? It isn't. Negative is nothing. It's, <laughs> do you understand that? There's one spirit, it's Yahweh. The negative was created to show forth Yahweh. But he's nothing. Do you understand that negative is nothing? Negative is nothing. <laughs> the score is one to nothing. Yahweh's one, and the devil's nothing. And that's what the score is always going to be. See? Read. For by one spirit... Were by we, one spirit, by the spirit of Yahweh Elam Yahshua. By that we, great spirit of Yahshua. Read. Were we all baptized into one body? Are we all baptized or we're all immersed into one body? He's the head and we're the assembly or his body. Read. Whether we be Jews or Greeks. Whether, whether we, we be, be bond whether be a Jew or a Gentile. Bond or free. Read. Have male or female, to black drink. or white, green or purple, or any other thing you want to think. It doesn't matter. This is not what we're looking at. You've got a soul. You understand? Mm -hmm. And that's what Yahweh's concerned about. And that's really what this teaching addresses. When you come in here, we ain't talking to you. We're not trying to clean you up. Because we know and understand through this great teaching, that if you clean up the inner man, the outer man is going to behave. We don't have to tell you do's and don'ts and this. You understand? And the laws and the ordinances and see, if you're in Yahshua, we don't have to worry about you. See, not that you'll never make a mistake, but you have hope in Yahshua. You have peace in Yahshua. Right. You can turn to Yahshua. You can ask Yahshua. You can thank Yahshua. Yahshua's ever present. That's He's right. a great spirit. And we're baptized into that one spirit. Mm -hmm. And these things are your examples so that you can know that. And when you go home, you still have that great spirit with you. He's your comfort. You understand that? Mm -hmm. And when you're, when you're ailing and you can get out of bed in the morning. Thank you, Yahshua. That's right. <laughs> and when you're feeling good, and you're like, whoa, thank you, Yahshua. You understand? Yep. And when you can get yourself to class, thank you, Yahshua. Because there's people that can't get here anymore. Right. See? Just can't make it. See? But you don't have an excuse for not being here if you can make it. And that's another thing. If you... Anyway, we really need to think more about being supportive of these small schools that we have. How would you like it if you came in here and the people that are always here weren't here? You know them people that are always here? You came in here, they're not here. Well, they just decided not to come tonight, like you do sometimes. I hope this don't hit anybody too hard, but you don't have an excuse for that. You need to be here to help and support these schools. We don't have long to go, you know. 
and some of us shorter time than others probably. But any way you look at it, we don't have long. We're right down to the end of this age that we're in right now. And I can remember when I was first in class, and I came to class in June, I think of, well, the year 1973, but I came to class in June. In the summertime, it was a really stormy summer, just like this one. And I can remember when it stormed up that summer, and I, I remember them teaching things because, you know, the, when you first hear this teaching, it just goes through your mind, and goes through your mind, and you don't think of it. I didn't think of anything for probably two years of my life except this teaching, just continuously. Well, no matter what I was doing, I was thinking of Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh, and all the things that I'd hear in class once a week. And then I'd get back there and I'd read and read and read, and then I'd hear, you know, hear more. But you know what? You, the, this is the point I'm trying to make about it. All those things that you heard, they really made an impression on you. Just like Rob said, that made an impression on you. And no matter when somebody comes in, this teaching makes a great impression on you. And the impression that it made on me that particular year was the end of the age. Because I'm telling you, they used to, really, the end of the age. It was, Mitch used to say we had one foot in eternity and the other on a banana peel. Yeah. Never hear him say that? Mm -hmm. And so this is what we were thinking about. So then storms would come and the wind and stuff. And I was thinking, this is that great mighty wind. And I'd get the kids, I had two little kids, not Justin, but my big kids. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd hold those little kids and I'm like, this is the end, it's coming. Because I believe what I heard, but I took it physically. Do you know what I mean? I just didn't, I didn't have the whole picture, but I believed what I heard. <laughs> and it's, it just makes such an impression on you. And everybody that ever hears the truth, it makes an impression on them. You know, I see people in Hornell that came to class two or three times back in the, you know, 80s. Back in the, way back when our classes were first there. And you know what would happen? The first thing they ask you, you still go to that class? <laughs> They don't even ask you how you're doing. Oh, you, 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 still go to that, you still go to that class? That's the first thing they think of when they see you. Yeah. Because they didn't stick with it, but they remembered that, you know, and a lot of people do that. A lot of people, oh, you still go to that class? You, you still go to that class? Are you ever going to graduate? Do you understand? And it does, it makes a great impression on you. And even if you don't accept it, and I'm sorry, we had an experience in Florida, Don and I, with a, a person. <laughs> uh, and she was trying to talk to him. I wasn't in the room when it was going on, but she was trying to talk to him about the truth. And he's a very nice man, sweet man, but he was so mad. And he's still mad. He's been texting me every day about how we're in a cult. Because the truth... See, you could say anything to him. I mean, he's just a nice, you could say anything to him. But the truth, it like, <laughs> it gets to you. There's something about it that it gets to you, you know? And I, it's just something. But okay, let's get back on the subject. Um, let's go to um, Galatians. Galatians. Yeah, what Galatians? What did you want? Where's Galatians? Somebody. <laughs> Baptism. What is it? 327. <laughs> 323, Donna. Thank you. 327. Galatians 327. Yep. Galatians 327. Yep. For as many of you as, as have been baptized into the Messiah have So as many on, of you has been baptized into the Messiah, have, and remember how you're baptized. You're baptized through the teaching. Yes. You're immersed through the teaching. Your faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of Yahweh. So that's how you're baptized unto Yahshua. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a great question. How do you get in Yahshua? You're baptized into Yahshua. Read. Have been baptized into the Messiah, uh -huh. have put on the Messiah. You have been baptized and you put on the Messiah. There you're is need in him. Read. There is neither Jew nor Greek, uh -huh. there is neither bond nor free. Read. There is neither male nor female, uh -huh. for you are all one in Yahshua the Messiah. That's right. And if you be the Messiahs, then you are 
Abraham's seed and heirs according That's right. to the promise. Yeah. And that whole third chapter of Galatians is about the promise. The whole fourth chapter of Romans is Beautiful. about the promise. Those things are really good to read sometimes. Okay, now I want to go over to Ephesians. First I want to get um, uh, Jude, the first chapter. Jude, or Jude, the, just start at one. And then I want you to get Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and start at verse 12. Jude 1 and 1. Jude, the servant of Yahshua and the Messiah and brother of James, mm -hmm. to them that are sanctified by Yahweh Elohim the Father and preserved in Yahshua the Messiah and called. Okay, who's the letter to? <sighs> Pay attention now. Read again. Jude, the servant of Yahshua the Messiah. Jude is a servant of Yahshua the Messiah. Read. And brother of James. Uh huh. To them that are sanctified. To them that are sanctified. That means you're set apart. That's right. You're sanctified in Yahshua. Read. Doesn't Sancti mean you're holier than thou, you know. Sanctified by Yahweh Elohim the Father and preserved in Yahshua the Messiah. And you're and preserved in Yahshua the Messiah. Read. And called. And you're called. Give me also the called. Revelation 17, 14. Okay. Keep reading, Trish. Please. Mercy unto you, uh -huh. and peace and love be multiplied. Mercy unto you, peace and love be multiplied. Read. Beloved, when I gave all diligence. Now this should really sound familiar to you, because this is one of our aims. Beloved. Beloved. He's talking to the beloved. He loves them. Paul laid down his life for his friends. Beloved. Read. When, when I gave, I gave all, all diligence. diligence. And Dr. Read. Kinley said, I was very serious about it. See, read. Thank when you. I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, uh -huh. it was needful for me to write unto you uh -huh. and exhort you that you should earnestly contend. For See, the you faith. should earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which, which was once delivered unto the sons the and sons. children of God. And it was delivered back here to the Jews, and it was delivered to the Gentiles. It was delivered unto them, the common salvation. And it was Yahshua the Messiah's death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and outpouring the Holy Spirit according to the scriptures. That's your common salvation. Read on. For there are certain men crept in unawares. Okay, go to Ephesians, please. Okay. Ephesians uh, 6 and 5. Read. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of the Messiah. Is this a take on the whole armor of Yahweh? Uh, Finally, 11. my brethren. Finally, my brethren, read. Oh, be sorry. strong in Yahshua and in and the power of his might. And finally, my brethren, be strong in Yahweh. Read. And put on the power of his might. And put on oh. the whole armor of Elohim. Oh, no, no. Let's just listen to what this armor is. I know you know this stuff. I know I'm preaching to the choir. But you know, sometimes these things are good to hear again. That's right. Keep reading. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we and Dr. Kidley in that last transcript, he said he wants you to be prepared to reject erroneous doctrine. And this is how you're, you're prepared to reject it. Keep reading, please. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, mm -hmm. against spiritual wickedness in high places. Read. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Elohim. This is what you're supposed to do. Take on the whole armor of Yahweh Elohim. Read. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And didn't he talk about how evil it was? And how Dr. Kinley, who was the founder who had this vision, said that it was more evil now than ever before. And that was back in the 1960s that he said it. You think it's eviler now? Yes. It's getting worse and worse. You can't even think about going someplace without getting shot. <laughs> read and having done all to stand and having done all to stand read stand therefore having your loins girded now this about. is what, how you're supposed to be dressed up you're supposed to be encircled with or your loins you're supposed to be compassed about with what the truth the truth this is the true name of Yahweh Elohim Yahshua the truth read and your feet oh wait a minute stand with it 
um, I'm sorry. That's and okay. having on the breastplate of righteousness. And you have on the breastplate of righteousness. And your what's feet. in your heart is what's right according to what thus saith Yahweh. Not what you thought. That's what righteousness is. Breastplate. It's your heart. Read. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of and peace. And look at your feet of your soul. is supposed to be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It can bring peace to the soul. Because if you see that Yahshua the Messiah did go through this for you, you can know that it's possible that you have something. He resurrected and you resurrected with him. You can believe it. You can be know it because of the scriptures. You understand? Keep reading, please. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith. This is going to be your shield against the devil. Faith. Read. With which ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So when them darts come at you, it's going to be quenched by faith. When somebody says he was pierced in the groin, that's a lie. Yeah. You know something? You can see that this was pierced in the side. Yahshua was pierced in the side. You understand the ark was pierced in the side. The lamb was pierced in the side. So no matter what doctrine comes along, a fiery dart you got the tabernacle. You can see what happened there. And it quenches. It, it, you have faith because of the things that you've seen in this great teaching. Keep reading one more verse. And take the helmet of salvation. And by all means take that helmet of salvation. Or cover up your mind or your soul with that helmet of salvation. Knowing that Yahweh has saved your soul. Read. And the sword of the Spirit. And the sword of the Spirit. Which read, is the word of Elohim. Which is the word of Elohim. With those few words of encouragement, I thank you very much. I hope somebody got something out of that. Thank you. I'd really like to thank everybody for coming, driving all that way. Really appreciate your company. I hope that the class was out of five tonight. Should have been. It was a nice lecture. I enjoyed it myself very much. Uh, if you didn't know, Bonnie was not well for a while. I didn't know. I found out. And I'm glad, and we're all glad to see that you're doing better. Very happy. Uh, I have some information there about uh, reprinting of the Holy Name Bible, Holy Name Bible and that it's available. Uh, I'll talk to you about it uh, in the future. Okay? So anybody that wants to order one can order one. Uh, can we all rise to be dismissed, please? Reading the doxology from Jude. Yeah. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only and all wise Elohim, our Savior, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and for all time. Let us all say in unity, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.